Everybody, it is Chef Ryan Scott here in my house in Marin County. Actually, I'm supporting a little bit here. I live in a little quaint town called San Anselmo, and you guys are in my kitchen, my house right now. It's an absolute honor to be here with the Patient, Patient Empowerment Network and also Stephanie Chong, my very good friend with her patient story, reached out and asked me if I would do a dish for everybody today. And it's an absolute honor of mine because cancer actually runs very deep into my family. I'll tell you a couple stories as we're going, but my father was diagnosed with colon cancer and also my grandfather and myself. So today I wanted to do a really cool dish with you guys. It's called my Green Monster Frittatas. And the whole basis of this today is to show you how you can sneak in the delicious greenness into something as simple as a little frittata. But what I use is the little muffin molds. And the muffin molds kind of cross-utilize using a muffin, but also a small enough frittata to where it's portable. So what I like to do is I like to make these frittatas. I freeze them, and then all I do is wrap them with a wet paper towel and they're on the go. It's coming out in my new book called No Fuss Family Cookbook that comes out on 525 of this year, just around Father's Day. This recipe is a sneak peek into my new book. A lot of you may already have my best seller, which is this guy, one to five. It's on its third print, and I think it's four years ago that I did this book. But today I wanted to dive into a fun, easy, dish that I call the green monster. And I call the green monster because I try to find ways always to sneak in some nice little healthy bites. So what you always want to do, especially when you're demoing with a lot of people and talking, always preset your pan back here. I've got a medium sized saute pan. I like to use nonstick because I try to stay away from the you know, extra fats when it comes to cooking. I'm ready to go. Give a little washy washy on my hands. I always have a towel ready. And in the culinary world, we like to use something called mise en place, which just means get your stuff in place. As you guys can see, I have every essential thing that I need to make this simple on the go green monster. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bowl here. I have a russet potato. So this can be a russet potato, this can be a Yukon potato. Whatever it is that you have, it needs to equate about to one cup of shredded potato. What I like to do is I take my box grater now, if you have those hash browns in the store, in the bag, absolutely perfect. As I take my grater, and all I'm gonna do is just now take this potato, and then all you do is just grate, 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 grate down. And the key thing to making sure that you get the perfect potato, and it's not too starchy, wet, waxy, mealy, is once you get it to this stage, let me bring this over to my little side cam that I have here. I usually call this my Rachel Ray cam, but this is my patient empowerment network cam right here. So what you do is once you have it to this stage, you flush it with water until the water is completely clean. That means you've washed off all the starch and the starch is what's gonna actually turn the eggs a different color, um, they release a lot of water. So you take them, you wring them out, you get out all the water from there until you have a clean, beautiful, shredded potato just like so, look at that. So the brown skin is going to give it a little brown color, but this is about one cup, which is absolutely perfect. We need a couple little accompaniments that go with this. The handy dandy onion. This is a great way to sneak in onions when it comes to getting kids to eat. So I always like, especially with my daughter, is I add a little bit of onions into a dish that's kind of like a ragu, like this one is. I'm going to take just a little bit of my olive oil that I do up in Newcastle, California. And I'm going to put a little bit of that on the bottom of my pan. These little stragglers popped out from the onion, so I'm just going to throw them in there and just go ahead and let them cook with these guys. And I'm just going to slide my knife towards the back, not cutting all the way through, and just going to here and pulling, pulling, pulling. Now the angle that you go this way is depending on the size that you want the onion. So the smaller the gap, the smaller the onion slice that you're going to have. So I'm just going to go against the grain like so. And then we're just going to slice through. And when I say slice through, it's kind of like a locomotion. A lot of people, when they cut, they lift their hand. And when you lift your hand, that is going to allow you to get your fingers in there and get your fingers caught. So let that locomotion slide through here. And as it goes through this, I take it against that. 
I slice through, and you're good to go. So we're now going to take our knife. One little trick, and a lot of people do this wrong. They'll slide their knife, blade knife, across the board, and that's how your knife gets dull. Flip your knife over and make that your bench scraper, just like so. I take my finger away from the blade, I clean it off, I bring the knife over and make sure the heat is on. This is about a half a cup of onions in my family. I always bulk it up and do it double the amount. Another trick, push it away from you. Never kind of dump it in and let it go towards your body. A lot of young cooks have burn marks all over their hands. Uh, another little trick that I have here, this is, um, shh, it's Trader Joe's garlic that's in the frozen section. That way I don't have to clean it up. I dump in about a tablespoon of fresh garlic that's frozen. I've got a three-year-old in the house. So we're now gonna add our onions and our garlic into this pan and let it start to sweat. We're gonna add our potatoes, our shredded potatoes that I did right inside with those onions. This gives us an opportunity now to break down the onions a little bit, break down the potatoes a little bit, and get them nice and tender and ready for us to go ahead and start building our frittatas, which are gonna be in an egg bowl. I have some in the oven now, so I'll have some to show you guys. A little pinch of generous salt is gonna go right in here, and when I mean a pinch, I mean a decent amount. The salt is gonna soften the onions. It's also gonna soften the potatoes and allow them to uh, start to cook down a little bit. So, take a little spoon here, and let's start getting this guy cooking down. You can always tell if you need more fat, if you need more oil, because you can first of all listen to it. You hear it? You cook with your ears, your eyes, and your nose. I can smell it cooking. I can hear it cooking, and I can see it cooking, but it's popping a little bit. It needs a little bit of love. It needs to fill that jacuzzi up with a little bit of water. There's too many people playing in the pool there old days when I was in high school. I was completely diagnosed with colon cancer. I was given a time frame um, that we were going to start doing chemotherapy. Uh, I had, by the age of eight or nine, I had six or seven colonoscopies by the time I was eight or nine years old. And it got to a point to where my parents were told that take him on a trip, take him anywhere he wants, his time is up. And through the will of God, I guess, and loads of prayer and loads of medication. There was a story that I told Tamara that's in charge of this. I said, you know, the day that I really understood at eight years old that there was something wrong was, first of all, my appetite wasn't the same as everybody else's, but I can only eat chicken and rice and the things that you would have to take back in the day for a colonoscopy are not what you have to do today. By the way, grown men, I'm 41 years old, it needs to be like going to a gas station and filling up your car to get a colonoscopy. We need to not think of it as invading, but helping. Uh, to me, <laughs> it's a five-hour nap, and I can turn off my phone, and nobody bothers me. And I get to have a little bit of apple juice. So we're seven up. So I would really encourage men out there that think, for any reason, men and women, uh, for any reason that, that, you know, it doesn't, oh, it, you know, it's encroaching onto my space. You know what? I'd much rather be encroached than not be around to have that opportunity. So I'd like to break the wall on the next generation of 30s and 40-year-olds out there that, you know, when you see signs or if it runs in your family, I was the first one that had colon cancer. Then it was my dad. And then it was my grandfather. All three of us lived through it. My grandfather now has passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, just lived a very vibrant 88 years that Charles did. But, um, you know, it was important to make sure that we went in. It was important to make sure I got checked. It was important to make sure that we listened to the doctor. It was important that I stayed to the diet. Um, you know, how I got cured, that's a story, but I made it through it. Let's roll into this real quick. I now have my potatoes just tender enough, just beautiful enough, that there is a little bit of, the, all the bite is taken off of them. What we're gonna do is take this beautiful guy, and here's the way that you can hide it. Here's the way that this lovely guy called Swiss chard is typically something that not a lot of kids like. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the stem, clean the stem down, and take the leaves off. I have a bowl of this already. It's been washed and chopped. We're just gonna now add this to our bowl. And let this just cook down for a second until the leaves start getting wilted a little bit. And what we're looking for is we're going to take our mold here, and once we make our egg mix, 
our Swiss chard and potato mixture is going to sit right on top and it's going to cook through. And get all happy. Typically it's not hard for me to talk and cook, but I want to make sure that this is perfect for you guys because doing this demo today is really special for me. You know, typically I say no to charities because I had a 501c3 for many years. And as chefs, you're asked to do load the demos and help raise money and you know for numerous amount of charities and a couple of years ago i stopped saying no and i started saying yes to the things that were near and dear to me and the things that made sense to me and i gotta say that cancer being through my family for the last three or four decades um my brother's a fireman in, in the south bay and he gets he gets checked my sister is a professor at unlv and she's getting checked. Um, my parents are no longer together anymore, but my mom has even gotten checked. And it, it's just something to be cognizant of. It's something to care about. And having stories like Stephanie when she came on my radio show and beating it and the adversity of how she overcame it. And, and as a mother, it's the support of families. And cancer's no joke. So what we're doing here is our potatoes have gotten softened. Our Swiss char chard is softened now. Look at that. I mean, if this is my 2021 Christmas card. Oh, oh, oh. Let's take this guy. Do a little tossy toss just like this. Just enough to wilt it. Just enough to break it down. Just enough to make it look a little tender. But absolutely perfect. So let's, like, let's make a big mixture. And let's make it with a little healthiness. So, you know, with everybody's diet these days and everybody staying at home in quarantine, you know, for the first couple of weeks, it was cool. For the first couple of months, it was cool. And then you started to get the quarantine fill. And then you notice that you're drinking a gallon of vodka a week. And that's not good. This is non-fat yogurt I'm using instead of whole milk. Uh, this is about three quarters cup of yogurt. Feel free to swap this out. Feel free to use cottage cheese if you like. Here's the kicker. Come on, you guys know what this is? What do you think that is right there? Yep. Flax seeds with a little bit of rosemary. <laughs> uh, flax seeds is a great protein that we're sliding inside this dish. I've got some chives. This is about a tablespoon of fresh chives from my garden in the back here. I've got a little bit of fresh rosemary, which is about a tablespoon. This adds a little bit of herbaceousness. In the recipe that you guys have, I have basil. My daughter doesn't like basil. So uh, I keep it out. My dear friend Lydia Bastianich gave me the best trick when Alda was born. She says, Ryan, when you start feeding all regular food, I want you to take that rosemary bunch. I want you to smash it with your fingers. I want you to put that right up to Olive's nose. So when the first time Olive tries rosemary, it won't actually be the first time because her brain is already connected to that smell. And she won't go, ew, yucky, from spinach to parsley to even taking... So when I make dishes that she doesn't eat, we'll take the salmon and we'll walk it by her and have her waft it and smell it. And that way it's familiar to where our daughter at three years old is a really great eater. And I think that really helped out a lot. I'm going to take seven eggs. You can do egg whites if you like, but the protein from the egg yolks is good. So if you're going to sub that out, add something, a little fat in there to make sure the whole thing comes together. Like I said, a little bit of cottage cheese is totally fine. And then we're going to take a little bit of parsley. Actually, I add a lot of parsley because I like the chlorophyll and the color that we get from this. And then something that's been super handy in my house because two of my meals a day are made in a blender in a smoothie. And this is how I get a lot of my protein, a lot of my energy. to where you have this beautiful chlorophyll looking kind of like um, a green smoothie. That's an egg mixture that's gonna go so great. So what we got here, this little pie tin. This is a muffin tin, everybody has one of these at home. If you don't have one, uh, you can bake this in a full pan if you like. Then what I do is a lot of people do this and they're like, oh, I can't get enough, it doesn't work well. Turn your pan up to the side and spray the pan at this angle right here. Just like so, make sure you get in every little crevice. Then the trick is, you take it, you open it up, and then you pour it only halfway. My halfway camera, you got this? 
and really pour it halfway. The reason why we're pouring it halfway is this mixture is going to get topped with the potatoes and Swiss chard. My oven is preheated at 350 degrees, so these go in for about 15 to 17 minutes, and they will souffle, which means they are going to aerate and they will come up. So going only halfway is perfect because you got to fill it also with this ingredients here. So let's take our Swiss chard. I'm going to turn this just like this. Here's our Swiss chard and potatoes. And this little mixture goes just like so. And I always notice when I do shows, this is the point when I start assembling, I start making like a baby voice. Creating these little green monsters is a great way to, oh, but my kids don't like green. Put ham in here, put bacon in here, bake them off and call them green eggs and ham frittatas. It's a great way to do a spin. Remember, recipes are catalysts and they're also just starting points for you to be able to build and do anything that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and set these down here. And you've got the coolest, simplest green monster frittatas that I hit a bunch of vegetables that are green vegetables inside here with some chia seeds. I'm gonna get a little spoon or something or here in my house, it's my daughter's, I don't know, some character fork thing here. When you take this frittata out, we set this off to the side. And you cut this guy in half. And you guys see? Look at the Swiss chard, look at the onions. You're like, Ryan, you didn't add cheese. You don't need more dairy, especially when two and three year olds are eating. There's enough dairy in their diet already. They're drinking milk in the morning. This is a cool little trick. Take this, chop it up, make an egg salad sandwich. But um, thank you for taking the time, man, man. And as my dear friend Leah Maclin says in San Francisco, never talk with your mouth full. Bye.